Hello students, this is a lecture on Alamkara, the theory and its characteristics. Alamkara literally means an embellishment or an element of decoration. It was initially not considered as a corporeal part of poetry, but it was instead considered as an addition to poetry that aimed at its decoration. It was also known as Kavilakshana or Sahitya Shastra. Kavilakshana literally meaning the manner of poetry and Sahitya Shastra literally meaning the art of literature. It was first mentioned by Bharata in his treatise called Nati Shastra. However, it was expounded and explored in detail by Bhama. Bhama wrote a text called Kavilamkara that was regarded as the first text of poetic theory in Sanskrit, just as Nati Shastra was considered the first treatise on dramaturgy in Indian classical literature. Bhama studies Alamkaras in subtle detail in this text. Bhama had a typical opinion of literature. He divided literature into Gadya and Padya on the basis of expression. He stated that Gadya was plain literature just like prose and the artistic literature took the name of Padya or poetry. On the basis of genres, he split literature into different forms namely epic, drama, verse narrative, prose narrative, free verse, etc. He also classified literature on the basis of subject matter in literature on gods, literature related to art, and literature related to science or facts. Bhava considers kafya or poetry as the highest form of literature. He considered that it has the most variety and therefore offers most ways of expression. He also stated that there were certain traits that poetry must always aim at achieving. The first one was Madhurya or melody. The second one is Ojas or magnificence. And the third one is Prasad or Lucidity. When it came to Alamkara, he primarily meant that Alamkara was an adornment or an embellishment that adds to the beauty of poetry. However, in later stages, Bama admits that Alamkaras add to the meaning of poetry as well. Unfortunately, Bama does not really define Alamkara in his work. However, he has stated it multiple times that it is an essential element of poetry. He categorized Alamkaras into two types. The first one was Shabda Alamkara and the second one was Arth Alamkara. When it came to Shabda Alamkara, he said that anything that appealed to the sound aspect of poetry was Shab Alamkara. That is, anything that beautified poetry on the basis of its sound aspect could be called Shab Alamkara. He stated that there were three major Shab Alamkaras. The first one being Anupras Alamkara which is the equivalent of alliteration in English. It was the repetition of consonant sounds. The second one was Yamaka or the replication of patterns of sound. Then the third one was Pad Abhyasa, which is refrain or the repetition of a particular part of the verse. Arth Alamkara was relatively more detailed and it contained the poetic 
devices that appealed to the meaning of the poetry. There were at least 46 Arth Alamkaras mentioned by Bhama. But since it is not possible to deal with all of them, we would be dealing with the major of these Alamkaras. The first one is Rupaka or metaphor. It is a comparison using standards of comparison. Second one is Deepaka, that is illuminator. It is the establishment of a relation between direct and indirect objects. The third one is simile or upma, that is marking the resemblance in objects. The fourth one is akshepa or objection. It is a statement of denial passed at something that is difficult to believe. Next one is arthantaramyasa, that is allusion or citation of some illustrative information. The next one is vyatirek or a simile of the superlative, that is a comparison with the best in that particular category. Next is vibhavana or an attributed cause. When there are certain occurrences that do not have visible reasons. The poet attributes certain causes to such things. Those causes can be called vibhavanas. Next one is samasokti or terseness. That is an expression using the minimal amount of words possible. Sometimes also called as epigrammatic script in English. Next one is Atishyokti or Hyperbole. It is an exaggerated presentation of some idea. The next one is Utpreksha or Conceit. We know that conceits are personal metaphors or far-fetched imageries. The next one is Hetu or Reason. It is a clarification of cause and effect. The next one is Hetu or Reason. It is a clarification of cause and effect. The next one is Sukshma. It is a detailed study of the actions expressed through miniature body movements. The next one is Lesha or Minuteness. It is tiny description of effective objects other than the body. The next one is slishtam or slesha, the equivalent of which is pun, which means the clever use of words that sound similar. The next one is virodha or paradox, that is putting two opposites together to establish contrast and thereby give a new meaning. The next one is nidarshana or an extended metaphor. An elaborate comparison of one thing to many. The next one is Ashik or the benediction. It is often done in the beginning of one text or when there is a musing of the Almighty. The next one is Urjasvi or vigorosity, which is a vigorous description of an object or a person to provoke interest of the reader. Apart from Shabdalamkaras and Arthalamkaras, Bhama also described the doshas in poetry, or the ills and the blemishes of poetry. He said that there were certain problems in writing and describing poetry, which often were referred to as doshas. He pointed out that there were problems related to grammar, metrical patterns, synchronization, semantics, redundancy, and lack of conjunctions. Despite all of these, he also mentioned that poetry was far superior to any other forms of literature. But then he said, since poetry was superior, it was most infested by such doshas. He also provided an elaborate list of doshas 
in relation to different alamkaras. However, this list was incomplete but was refined by several of his successors. Alongside reading alamkaras, it is also necessary that we understand rhetoric of the West. Although we won't be dealing with the Western rhetorics in this lecture, it is considered necessary to compare alamkaras to the Western rhetorics. Both the theories developed parallelly in different regions. However, when Bama was laying foundations for Alamkara and his successors such as Dandin, Utpatta refined it, Cortex and Gorgias introduced rhetorics in the West and their successors such as Socrates, Plato and Aristotle refined them. Thank you for being patient in this lecture. If you have any doubts, confusions, if you want any study material or notes, or you want any on-demand lectures, you can mail us at erinaliterature at the rate of gmail.com. Thank you for hanging on. See you in the next lecture.